What's up, y'all? Welcome to the 16th episode of The Journey Podcast with me, Jada Christine. Today we have another special guest, Miss Ruby. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, y'all. What's up? It's me, Miss Ruby. And yeah, welcome to The Journey Podcast. (laughs) I'm happy to be here. Today we're going to be talking about multiple things, actually. A little bit about relationships. Um, she's going to be sharing a little bit about her platform and her testimony. Um, Over spiritualizing dating, when she met her husband, and more. So stay tuned. If you like what you hear, please share it with a friend, comment, subscribe to the channel, download the podcast, share it with social media, do whatever you got to do, and let's get into it. Question one, Mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about yourself, your platform, and your testimony. So when you say my testimony, you mean like my testimony in Christ, right? Oh, okay. You know what's interesting is I'm still working on that. Like, like, I guess reducing that down to like a quick minute, you know, Mm -hmm. just tell people because my testimony can be like an hour long, so I'm I'm going to do my best. This will be my first try. Okay. Um, But yeah, so my name is Ruby. Uh, it's me, Miss Ruby, on social media, and you can pretty much follow me everywhere. And I um, currently, I've actually been a social media, like a content creator uh, for a long time. Started out on YouTube years ago, and now obviously I'm kind of like all over the place. Um, but currently, what I'm using my platform for is to talk to people about uh, creating and sustaining healthy relationships, specifically within the dynamic of marriage. Because I am a married woman, I have a um, passion for helping marriages to actually like get the most at you know get the most positive out of their experience as well as um survive and weather the storms and specifically i have a passion for helping women who are going through the transitional stage from being miss independent single to now coming under submission of a husband um or submission to a husband and like seeing the beauty in that, like identifying the beauty in that and, and where they can thrive in that without it being so much of a fight. Because I find that like a lot of independent women is a struggle for us, especially like people in my era, um, millennials, whatever, millennial women who were not really raised with the expectation that someday they would be like having someone that is the decision maker Mm -hmm. in their life. Um, all expecting to provide for ourselves, you know, run the show and then getting married. Like, yeah, I'm married to you because I love you, but not because like I need you to do anything yeah. specifically for me. Um, and then get into these marriages and realizing like, that's not what the men married us for to have like another man. Essentially they married us cause they wanted, you know, something different. So now, right now I'm super passionate about like just talking to people about, like demonstrating different ways and having conversations around like different ways that we can actually execute on that successfully Mm -hmm. and be able to keep our marriages alive and thriving. Um, as far as my testimony in Christ, uh, Ooh, that's, that's a deep one. I'll just say this. I was born and raised in a family who, um, knew God, but didn't serve God Mm -hmm. in action. Um, but it was enough for them to at least know God because they introduced me to God at a very young age. I was in church Mm -hmm. reciting scriptures. So I remember, um, I have so many memories to draw upon of what the church experience was like, um, but it wasn't until I was a teenager and I started to experience life in all of its darkest ways that I started to actually experience God for myself. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it was in pretty much losing everything. Mm-hmm. Um, my mother had seven kids, mm-hmm. single mom, you know, she was married, her husband died, she got married again, her husband was abusive, it was just like a lot that she went through. And eventually she threw in the town, gave up on life, and, and you know, her kids suffered the consequence of that. And so she mm-hmm. was on drugs on the street, we just lost everything, and um, and all I had was God, yeah. you know, and it was, it was the memories of being in church sometimes on Sundays or the things that people had told me throughout my life that maybe I, I didn't quite heed, yeah. um, or really live out, but getting to a point where I don't have anything else. So God, I need you mm-hmm. and really being on my face, praying these prayers that I didn't really know how to do. And, yeah. you know, just doing that work and then seeing God show up by sending his angels along the way to help me survive. And it was in those moments that transformation was made in my life where I started to really realize like, you know what, God is real. And at some point I need to develop a real relationship with God 
and learn what that means. Um, but yeah, God basically saved me. I was out on the streets. God sent, you know, it was it was a variety of things, but God sent um, someone specific in my life to help me and my family out. Mm -hmm. And our life completely turned around. I went from being like homeless in San Bernardino, California, mm -hmm. to, you know, living with someone who wasn't even family, who became closer family to me than a lot of people that are actually blood related to me over mm -hmm. the course of the next years, having no idea that this was in the cards for us and learning uh, what it was like to actually come under the leadership of a man because mm -hmm. I, I with my mom being a single mom I never had a real man in the house she yeah. had boyfriends but it was never like that solid you know mm -hmm. father figure and so the person who got sent in my life was a male figure who now I'm living with mm -hmm. you know who <laughs> I, now I gotta you know follow his rules you know stuff like that so I went through like a, a major transitional stage in my teenagehood mm -hmm. and and it was through that that God really won me over. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty much a wrap. I would say that since then, since about 13, 14 years old, everything that God did in my life to really rescue me mm -hmm. um, from darkness, literal darkness. Like, I literally remember, like, walking down dark streets, alleys, and mm -hmm. feeling as though I was going to be consumed by Satan. Mm -hmm. um, God actually rescuing, rescuing me uh, through a series of events as a teenager to everything... I went through from that point on into adulthood, into my marriage, into everything. I I knew to call on God, to pray, to get closer, to get closer. And I've just really been living that out, I think. That's good. Yeah. That's, good. That's the best. How long was that testimony? That was, <laughs> I don't know. like six minutes. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. So just to jump into the conversation now. Yeah. A lot of Christian women, I used to do this myself. I mean, I'm only like 19 years old. But when I first gave my life to Christ, yeah. <laughs> when I first gave my life to Christ, I had my little heart broke because I had never been in a relationship, but I was like with the first guy I had ever been with. And so after I started my healing process and after I gave my life to Christ, I was like so eager to start dating again. I was like, I want a man. He has to be a man of God. He has to do all this. And I was like, on every dating app, I was really trying to put myself out there. And now I'm in a place where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to date. I'm too young for this. I'm not really ready to jump into a relationship right now. But when I was looking, I was over spiritualizing dating. And it just made it too chaotic. It was like an idol in my life. Like, I thought every single man I met was my husband. Oh, 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 <laughs> and like, if I just. It was just too much going on. And so what would you say to um, someone who was dating intentionally, mm -hmm. how to not take, how to take the pressure off, okay. enjoy the process, enjoy the process and not over-spiritualize dating? It's funny when you say over spiritualized because a part of me thinks like, ain't I wrong with spiritualizing dating? But I, I'm try I think I understand what you're saying. Like uh -huh. when you get to that point where everything's this like yes. spiritual experience, so now you're like, yes. well, God, He's in my pathway. Exactly. He must be sent from you. That's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> right. So really, it's just applying. You know, the it's applying the the wisdom that God has given us, which is discernment, mm -hmm. as well as forgiveness and sometimes forgiveness is something we need to do immediately before someone does anything wrong yeah, yeah. and I think what I mean by that is humanizing people mm -hmm. but that's something that I would say in general to do for the rest of our lives is get in the habit of humanizing the people that we're dealing with because everybody that we come in contact with even if they say they know God or you see you met them at church or anything yeah. like you have a confirmation already like oh this is this is like gucci because yeah. i already know you have a relationship with god even with yeah. that it's like you don't know what their relationship is though with exactly. with god you don't know what they're saying in those quiet moments so always 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 even to this day with my husband and i you know obviously being believers i still humanize him all the time because mm -hmm. that allows me i guess you like you said not to over spiritualize things because the spirit is present all the time mm -hmm. and but what i like to say is i think that some people think that i think some people are looking for emotional alchemy mm -hmm. instead of spirituality yeah and and that means that sometimes the spirit is moving and you ain't gonna feel it yeah. it's not gonna always be this exactly. grand emotional exactly. you know what i mean moment yeah um, and so when we're looking for that, like I can see what you mean, over spiritualizing. So I would just say, humanize the person you're talking to and understand they've had a human experience and let things unfold as they may and just always use discernment. God gave it to us to use for a reason, specifically in the dating. Yeah, realm. definitely. Uh -huh. 
Okay, so you're married. Yes. How long have you guys been married? Seven years. Okay, so how did you meet your husband? What age? When did you guys get married? We've been married seven years, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just checking myself. Um, yeah, so actually, I met my husband when I was 20, about to turn 21, I believe. So we met online on MySpace. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was telling somebody the story recently in a recent uh, podcast I was in. But... <laughs> Um, yeah, so I was like 21 because I remember the picture that I took at my 20th birthday Mm -hmm. was the profile picture I used Uh. on on MySpace. And it was a picture that I thought was really pretty. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, back in the day, it was no pressure. You didn't have to have all this glam. (laughs) And I just looked at it. I was like, I think I looked, there was a pretty angle. I looked pretty. So it's a good thing I used that picture because that's what made him Mm -hmm. click on my page. I was in somebody's top eight whose page he was on. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, that girl's cute. So he clicked on it. And then after he clicked on my page, he saw, he saw some similar interest to me. Mm -hmm. and so he inboxed me and we started talking about things like having nothing to do with him trying to get at me or nothing it was just like Mm -hmm. we had you we shared common interests but Mm -hmm. that was basically I remember that like it was coming up on my birthday Mm -hmm. my 21st birthday and we kind of just chopped it up got to know each other online for like the rest of that year because my birthday's in April so come like December is when we actually November or December is when we actually met in person mm-hmm. and it still wasn't on no like date and stuff it was just like yo like you live in the same city as me that's crazy like let's meet up <laughs> and and um yeah and then it was shortly after that that I actually started to develop feelings for him mm-hmm. and he wasn't like actively pursuing me to be his girlfriend mm-hmm. but he had dropped enough hints for me to pick up on them and start dropping my own hints okay. for us to both realize that we're kind of into each other. Yeah. And like, for me, it was really important to just let it unfold naturally. I didn't want to force nothing. But at that time, when he came into my life, I had already been praying. I think, I don't remember if I met him before the specific prayer mm-hmm. or right after, but it was around the same period that I had actually prayed a very specific prayer mm-hmm. to God asking me to give me eyes for the man he has for me. Mm-hmm. And it was, I always tell people it's a very specific prayer because I had eyes for the wrong types of dudes. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I was like, I need to turn this off because all these dudes, I can see with my discernment that that they're not the ones. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm drawn to them. I'm attracted to them. Right, right. And so my husband, meanwhile, he's like just this friend on MySpace that was nice, but I didn't know him in real life. I didn't have any real attraction to him. Yeah. And even when I met him in real life, he wasn't the typical guy I would go for. But yeah. since I had prayed that prayer, I remember there were little things about him that made me kind of interested, Mm -hmm. but I was like, I'm not going to force this though, because I kind of feel like he might've been sent from God, but at the same time, I'm not super drawn to him. Mm -hmm. I didn't force it. I let it unfold naturally. He just checked all the boxes and you know, you know, eventually one thing led to the uh, the other. And three years after being in a relationship, we got married. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hold on. Let me see. So, being married for seven years, what are some things you've learned in your marriage and that you're now using to teach others through social media? Ooh. Man, submission. (laughs) No, for real. Like, Uh submission is a whole... It's like this whole new world of of um, lessons to learn as a woman, what it really means to submit. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, it's a popular term nowadays, so I call it submission. But prior to the last couple of years with this conversation unfolding more popularly, Mm -hmm. I knew because I was reading my Bible and I was in my marriage, there was something in me that knew that I needed to heed what my husband was saying Mm -hmm. on a greater level than I had ever been used to. Even after being married, I still always saw it as like 50-50. You know, you have your opinion, but I have mine. I'll try to find the nicest way to express my opinion to you. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like, you know, we're in this together. And there's a lot of truth to that. But I'm learning now. What One of the things that I learned during my marriage, during the beginning stages, was like, dang, he so easily shuts down and shuts off Mm -hmm. when I don't go with his flow. And that was offensive to me because I'm like, well, what about what I want? You know what I'm saying? Until I started to learn. And again, this is even before learning like the term submission and what that meant and all this stuff that I'm learning now, Mm -hmm. having the vocabulary to describe it. I was just like, you know what? Like sometimes just 
whatever he suggests, just do it. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes just like listen to him or whatever. And then as I started to come into these actual terms, then I started to realize like, oh, this is an actual thing. Mm-hmm. I started to understand that men in general, especially like men like my husband, let me say, I don't want to say in general because people get offended. <laughs> but it's like men like my husband, which I find that a lot of men like my husband exist. Mm-hmm. They don't really like resistance. Mm-hmm. And I and that's in general for the, these types of men. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. I mm-hmm. thought it was just like, man, you act like I can't have an opinion, yeah. you know, and really it's just like, he's like, no, your opinion matters. But if I'm telling you something that I've already determined is the best thing for our family, I'm not really looking for resistance. I'm looking for cooperation. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for someone who is going to be a cooperative cooperator in this operation mm-hmm. and, and allow me to be the captain though. Like, mm-hmm. you know, allow me to be the head honcho and trust me. And I started to learn, like, I would like put little different things to the test. Like, it's easier for me to kind of bow, like to, what, what would I say, take a L mm-hmm. on certain things. Like, you know, we're deciding where we want to go for a date night or whatever, and we're going back and forth. If I take the L, my feelings might be hurt because I might feel like you don't care about my preferences and opinion. Mm-hmm. But for him, his whole pride is going to be hurt. His ego is going to be bruised. He's going to feel like I don't trust him. It's going to be a lot more damage done. Mm-hmm. So I started to notice, like, you know what? It's easier for me to just go with his flow and then make suggestions mm-hmm. than it is for me to try to get him to go with my flow. And yeah. that was just, and, and now I'm starting to learn, though, that that's the difference between masculinity and femininity. And um, I remember, like, at the beginning of my marriage, I was given this book called, book called Captivating. And it was all about, um, what is the tagline? He's unveiling the... Oh, man, I can't remember it. It talked about unveiling the mystery of a woman's soul. Mm-hmm. And it said something to me um, that has always like really stuck with me, that every woman desires to be swept up into a romance mm-hmm. and to play an irreplaceable role in a great adventure. Mm-hmm. And then my husband, a, a pastor gave that book to me. The pastor was doing our premarital counseling. And he mm-hmm. gave my husband a book called... Um, wild at heart Mm -hmm. and I don't remember um the summary to that book but I remember it it notioned something like like every man is basically wild at heart Mm -hmm. and he is an adventurer and so when I think when I thought about that I'm just like so I in general like as I read the book and so many things were speaking to me and speaking to my soul Mm -hmm. and helping me to understand myself better as a woman I'm just like so if I desire to play an irreplaceable role in a great adventure but my husband is the like lead adventurer essentially I forget Mm -hmm. the terminology they use but it's just like then as long as I get an important part in this journey Mm -hmm. and I am journeying with someone who knows where he is going then my cup is filled Mm -hmm. and so reflecting on things like that and then like the lessons that I was learning in that book about how to be captivating and I wasn't actually practicing them much but like (laughs) one of the like lessons and again I don't remember verbatim but I remember she, she was teaching some principle about you like every woman desires to be desired. Mm-hmm. Every woman, she gave an example of like when we're little girls, no one has to tell us. And I have two little girls now, and mm-hmm. I did not teach this, them to this, mm-hmm. this to them. They do it on their own. We do not have to tell little girls to want to be called pretty, mm-hmm. to want to be little princesses. We may give them the terminology, but they want to be adored. Mm-hmm. Like, as, as little girls, before anyone could tell us, we naturally gravitate to attention. Yeah. We want someone to see us and to validate us as being special, being pure, being beautiful, um, in like that very feminine way. I think everybody appreciates being appreciated and being, um, and, and being recognized. But I think that men naturally, they want to be recognized for the really hard, tough things that they accomplish yeah. where a woman wants to be a little girl, you know, even as young as a little girl wants to be acknowledged for her beauty. Yeah. She wants to know that she is so, you know, adorable that she can captivate the attention. And so she was teaching on that principle and those kind of things like resonated with me. And, and it wasn't until most recently that I started to realize like, so I could actually get a lot more out of this marriage. I can actually get everything that I want if I can instead of fighting for it and being resistant if I yield yeah if I tap into the side of me that is so alluring that he's just drawn to me and he wants to give me everything that I want Mm -hmm. you know so it's just like learning to play the game a little differently I Mm -hmm. think I think your question was like what would I tell people you know what would I like advise or what is the main thing that I'm like advising people in marriage and with women it's um 
Learn how to tap into your feminine energy that is captivating mm -hmm. and you will never have to fight for all the things that you want in your marriage. You will receive them if you're married to a solid, yeah. you know, quality god yeah. man man who's, who's trying to play his role to the best of his ability as well. Mm -hmm. I agree with that because a lot of people um, don't like the idea of submission because all the men around them are not men you would be able to submit to. Mm -mm. And so where we go wrong as women is not looking for the right man right. to get into a relationship with. And then the whole dynamic is just off. Man. <laughs> and now they're the dominant person. The man is submitting to them. It happens all the time. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and, no, for real. It happens all the time. And so, I feel so bad for women who like get caught up in that because they might hear someone like me talk and be like, okay, I'm going to try. Exactly. I'm going to be better. And then they're doing all the work, but it's like, you're throwing your pearls before swine. Exactly. So first and foremost, like the first, like I said, I prayed that God would give me eyes for the man he has for me. Mm -hmm. And I know 1000% mm -hmm. that that's exactly what transpired in my life. Mm -hmm. He, he allowed me to see, um, the qualities in the man that he knew would be best and most suitable for me. Mm -hmm. The man he sent me. A lot of us though, had I not prayed that prayer, I would have probably gotten into a relationship with somebody who I saw fit. Yeah. And then trying to put all this to work with a man that's unfit, mm -hmm. you know, is you're always going to run into a brick wall, unfortunately. Yeah. I for sure need to hear that because my mom always tells me, because she said before she met my dad, uh -huh. she had a type too. And <laughs> she was like, yeah, my dad wasn't her type, but, mm -hmm. you know, it was the type she needed. Yes. And so I have a type, but... The type yeah. I need is probably something. And then here's why I say that. Too. People be misunderstanding that. And they'll be like, you know, somebody might hear our stories or my story and be like, so you're, you don't, you're not attracted not even, to your head. No, like, you know? Yeah. Not yeah. even on that level. But, like, yeah. uh, but, but kind of on that level, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that it's kind of like, this is what I always like liken it to. Mm -hmm. If you taste fruit snacks, <laughs> like fruit snacks that have the little candies in a bag full of sugar, yeah. that's going to, like, my kids will always take a bag of fruit snacks over a piece of fruit, mm -hmm. you know, any day, because that is a processed, packaged item that is chemically, scientifically created to snag at every, like, one of my taste buds. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with nutrition. It's not, it's going to yeah. be instant gratification yeah. and delayed what, what would you say mortification what's the word delayed um degradation or whatever <laughs> word you can use it's going to take away from me in the long haul but it is designed for me to gravitate you know yeah. and thirst after it immediately and that's exactly what sin is mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. sin feels excellent to the flesh yep so <laughs> when we're looking with our eyes mm -hmm. not with our spiritual eyes but with our physical eyes at things and we're feeling with our physical bodies and that's what the world tells us. Oh, that's your type then. Right, right. Then we're, we, we come to really believe this is my type. This man who looks this way, smells this way, acts this way. Mm -hmm. But when we start to really put on our spiritual you know, minds, then we genuinely become attracted to a different type. Exactly. And so my husband, it's not that he looked bad. He was actually a nice looking guy. Yeah. There was something about his swag or his lack of swag in certain areas that just wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. When I put on my spiritual eyes, though, my spirit, you know, and I started to let my, you know, know the Holy Spirit lead me, I genuinely became attracted to my husband. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I just settled for somebody. Yeah, that yeah. Like now, I really think That's he's right. like the finest man on the face of this earth. He's exactly. super sexy. <laughs> like I love everything about him. Mm -hmm. But it's similar to like going back to the, the example of candy and stuff. It's just like mm -hmm. until you detox from all of that junk, mm -hmm. you're not gonna be able to appreciate how delicious an apple is. Mm -hmm. I had to turn my sights off to the men that I knew were not good for me and and focus my attention on my man um and then i was able to genuinely fall in love similar to you can eventually get to a place where you love salad yeah. if you stop eating you know the chips yeah. you know what i'm saying like that's kind of what that experience is like that's good <laughs> yeah so that's something to look forward to because i yeah. think when i tell people that they be like oh man i mean i'm gonna have to yeah it's like no you're gonna like it though trust yeah. me <laughs> Okay, that's all the questions I have. Do you have any final words? Um, I got a question for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, what, what, where are you at in the dating process? Like, with uh, you on 
I know you said you were on a bunch of apps, but now you're so. I'm not anywhere in the dating process. Like, I took my foot out because God put a lot of things before me that he wanted me to focus on. Okay. And it was a big idol, like, in the first mm. year of my relationship with God. And so he's showing me that he's everything I need. Because before I thought I needed a man or a boyfriend, I've always been a hopeless romantic, even in high school. And it was, like, a big reason I felt so depressed because I was like, I want what they have. I want to get in a relationship. I want a boyfriend so bad. But I didn't need a boyfriend. And so now I'm realizing, oh, I don't really need that right now. And if it comes, it comes. Like, I'll be swept off my feet. I'll be, you know. Yeah, no, when it comes, when it comes. If it came tomorrow, then I'd be ready. Right. But as of now, I'm going to be content in my circumstance because Um, as much as I still want, (laughs) as much as I still want it, if I keep thinking about it, I'm going to start feeling, like, really sad and really feeling like there's nothing where I'm at right now. Right. right. So, yeah, you know, that's real. That's a very real part of, and I love that you're taking this approach and mm-hmm. you're actually heeding what God is telling you because mm-hmm. I've seen that on people. I've always been somewhat of a hopeless romantic, but I was, was also pretty, like, real. Mm-hmm. So I, I had game young. <laughs> Like, I used to like, tell these dudes, like, as much as I might have liked them and been yeah. falling for them deep down, like, I wouldn't let them know it. Right, right. But I always made it, like, I, like, I'm the one that's selecting you. And you're yeah. not that, like, so I had game really young. Mm-hmm. I say that to say that I I never let myself fall too deep into the romanticism because mm-hmm. I, I understood from a very young age what men wanted, mm-hmm. uh, or at least... I thought I, I knew the basics. They wanted what was in between my legs. So I understood yeah. that what everything that you're telling me, I'm always going to assume that, you know, what you really saying is mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm always going to assume the worst. Yeah. And so because of that, I couldn't get too caught up. But deep down, like mm-hmm. knowing that I really did want somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of was like going back and forth. So I, I would say that I was very real with myself at a certain period of time. Mm-hmm. And I looked at other people's relationships and fair relationships that I knew that I had to keep God first more than, mm-hmm. you know, that. So I, I will say I didn't fall fully into that, but I have seen people mm-hmm. that I'm like, yo, like literally you're in failed relationship after failed relationship. Maybe mm-hmm. God is calling you to be alone for a little while. Exactly. Maybe God wants to work some things out in you yeah. and get your attention settled in, in a certain direction before he wants to bless you with this, you know, this new thing. Mm-hmm. And maybe because I was aware of that, maybe I didn't go through that particular phase. But I've seen so many people go through that phase and not choose God. Yeah. And yeah. and still to this day, I have struggles that could have been mitigated like early on had they mm-hmm. just heeded the call. Exactly. So I love that you're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting on God. <laughs> <laughs> it's just and, and in the waiting, you're working. Like, you know what I'm saying? Working yeah. out your salvation. Girl, that's what it's all about. Yeah. I love that for you. <laughs> So cute. Uh, 19. Oh my gosh. I didn't think I don't think I knew you were 19. How old did you think I was? I don't know. In your twenties, because I thought you finished college. Oh no. I oh. have two more years. I'm in my or I'm in my third year right now. Okay. Got yeah. it. Oh. A lot of people think I'm older than I am. Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit. I mean I knew you were young, but then oh nineteen. I don't know. At one point nineteen was grown to me. Like well, if I, I when I was nineteen. I turned twenty next month. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be 21. Be my 20s. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be the girl in your 20s that's like, I ain't got no time for no man to be in your 30s. Like, where are the men at? I won't. I won't. I won't. I swear. Yeah. No diss to any woman who's gone through that. Yeah. Because we've all been gravely misled. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I could have very well gone through that. I'm glad I didn't. But mm-hmm. yeah, I'm just telling you, you know, because mm-hmm. that's a thing right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, y'all. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening and thank you so much, Miss Ruby. I love that conversation. Um, Thanks for having me. Of course. Let's continue the conversation in the comments or the DMs. You can give them your social media. Check me out on um, TikTok at It's Me, Miss Ruby. TikTok is where I'm uploading um, skits, skits, interactive skits, and sometimes just talking videos, just like really playing these things out so like the difference between what it looks like to be you know submissive versus um combative and things like that and you can check me out on youtube where i'm gonna actually be uploading like a I'm starting my own podcast, mm-hmm. by the way. It's going to be the Domesticated Wives podcast. Mm-hmm. Maybe by the time this is up, it'll have been uploaded. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But I'm going to be sh- like um, uploading the video version of the Domesticated Wives podcast on there so we can have more of these conversations around domestication in a marriage and everything that comes between, you know, within that. And then Instagram, 
I don't know. I'm still figuring Instagram out, but just you know, follow me <laughs> everywhere because I'm kind of like in, I'm figuring all of this out right now. But we active, we active. <laughs> All right, so if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend that you may think need to hear the message or you think may like the message. Subscribe to the channel. Follow Miss Ruby. Follow Instagram at The Journey Podcast. And please leave a review. And please come back. Please spin back. Come see me or listen to me again. And have a blessed day. Bye, y'all.